So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I think this is a good segue. We were talking a little bit about backwards design, actually, in our last segment at the tail end. And I actually want to start there. Backward design is a concept that we think about a lot in assessment because we want to make sure that our assessments are truly designed so that they are assessing what we want our students to take with them, what we want them to be able to do by the time they've finished our content and done the exercises they need to move on to their next level. So I want to go ahead and start with Peng Laoshi. And that question is, why is backward design so important for Mandarin Chinese assessment in the online environment? Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, backward design is uh, very important uh, because uh, it's the same uh, reason we have limited resources of attention, of time, of energy. So um, we can teach students uh, 100 Chinese characters, for example, uh, every week, but they are not going to remember all of them. And actually for what we need them to do at the end of the week, uh, may not, it, it may not be necessary for them to know, uh, to um, memorize by heart, how to recognize them or write them uh, by the end of the week. Um, so I think that's, that's the key reason why it is important to, you know, really to think what is the outcome? Uh, what is the final product or what is the uh, performance? What is the proficiency goal of this course, of this, um, uh, um, of, of this semester. And um, it, uh, when you have, when the teacher intentionally put that into the design and that's the first things they consider, then they will be able to go back and then think, okay, when I design all the learning activities, when I design all the, um, uh, how do you say, assignments, uh, I will be selected. So what I include in the instruction, these are the words, uh, uh, these are the things that would, uh, functions I would like you to practice uh, in finishing this task or this activity. It all ties up uh, together uh, towards the final goal. So I think um, it will help us to uh, give students a better uh, learning experience. Uh, it will help students to um, grow uh, um, more, how to say, in a more acceptable, uh, uh, how to say, it, uh, in terms of uh, how they how they see uh, is the is, uh, is the uh, ideal uh, optimal use of their time and energy. Definitely, those are all important things to think about. And truly, again, I'm hearing this theme about we have to really focus on what we want the students to accomplish. What is the goal of this lesson? And before starting with that, starting with that backward design, I think we're going to be a lot more likely to get there versus just throwing content at them and hoping that the assessment reflects that. Thank you for that. Wang Laoshu, I'll pass the question to you. And again, the question is about assessment. And why is backward design so important for the online assessments of Mandarin Chinese in the online world? Um, I find uh, personally backward design very helpful and important uh, to ensure designing a su su successful assessment. Uh, so backward design tells you the expected learning outcome and helps you to set a goal before even starting you know, the design process. Uh, let's say I want to uh, you know, design a test to assess student fluency in conduct conducting a self-introduction in Mandarin Chinese. Uh, with that goal in mind, um, I can you know, select and design meaningful test questions and reading rubrics and to assess you know, fluency. Uh, in class, uh, I can design activities and a task to help students master the grammar patterns, the vocabulary, certain expressions and language points and to help students reach that goal. Um, so in practice, I conduct like say a one-on-one -on -one test to evaluate student fluency in speaking. A student may know their pronunciation is not accurate in that process, but they don't know how to improve it. So as an instructor and a curriculum designer, I need to I need to know students' concern and how I can uh, design a test to diagnose the problem accurately and um, their proficiency levels. And if a student does not do well in pronunciation, I can demonstrate how they speak it in comparison to how the native speakers speak it. And I find that's very important because sometimes students find it most helpful when they hear me imitate their mispronunciation um, instead of just like, uh, this is the ideal example, right? 
um, this is actually how you speak it. Uh, and such uh, they can compare, you know, how they speak it by hearing I, you know, imitate their mispronunciation versus the standard, you know, perfect audio clip. Uh, so they understand their problem. So from there, I need to tell um, uh, that, you know, this is, is this student how to improve it uh, through personal like a kind of uh, strategies. Uh, so each student is different. Sometimes it is affected by their phonological awareness and some other times it's due to their hearing problems. And, um, their certain pronunciation habits, for example, some students, you know, are, you know, kind of a hard struggle in speaking English and that, you know, L1, you know, ability affected their L2 study. So, um, so the, 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 from there, you know, I kind of understand, you know, who my students are. Um, and with backward design, I had kind of collected all those factors and then kind of weigh which one is important. And then when I design the test, I can address, you know, those issues more accurately. That's a good point. And just being aware as to where your students are and if there are particular things that might need to be addressed, if we can put that in the assessment up front, I think we're a lot more likely to go back and say, okay, these are the things that I need to make sure that I'm covering so my students are progressing. So that's a really good point. Thank you for that. I do love how online instruction really lends itself to differentiation. Kaslaoshu, passing the question to you. And again, it is why is backward design important for Mandarin Chinese assessment? So I definitely echo what Paul just said about, you know, we have limited time, limited resources, and so we have to prioritize, right? And and then what Wang also just said about, you know, knowing where your students are and where you want them to go and what that gap looks like so you know how to structure instruction, right? The sort of the most important thing I think with teaching is you teach from where your students are. There's no like, well, you should know this. The thing is, if they don't know it, they don't know it. So you telling them they should know it is harming them and harming you and not actually helping anybody. Um, backward design, the way I think about it is it's like good GPS. If you want to go somewhere you've never gone before, do you start driving and hope you make it and hope you get there eventually and you don't care how much time you waste? Or do you want to get there in the most efficient way possible so you start by setting the destination and then you get on the road. I think there's a clear answer there. And particularly when it comes to online teaching, but perhaps teaching again in general, um, I think the majority of the work that we do as teachers is before class starts. It's like the saying in Chinese that I shared on uh, whatever day that was, Wednesday, I think, you know, you spend 10 years off the stage for one minute on the stage. The idea is I can only design learning experiences and build my learning management system, set up these online tools that my students are going to use, this sort of pathway for them to go through if I know where they are right now and where I want them to be. And not only does that matter sort of course internally, right? If you're teaching a class and you sort of are structuring your units so that they're going to move to being able to perform consistently at the intermediate low level, let's say, um, then you're going to be structuring sort of the internal design of each of your courses and each day, you know, each unit, each class. But that also happens at scale. It's one of the things like Peng Lao Shi, for example, I'm sure at in a flagship program that's designed by definition to get students to achieve a certain level of proficiency by the end. That doesn't happen by magic. It happens by planning, right? So knowing that if I have four years, five years to get students to this level of proficiency, where did what benchmarks do they have to hit in year one, year two, year three, and year four to make that realistic? And what are they actually achieving, right? What are they actually hitting? So I think backward design, it sounds really, it can sound overwhelming. And it, this idea of sort of how do you plan assessments before you plan teaching, right? I think it can be a little bit confusing when you first get exposed to the idea, but boiling it down to beginning with the end in mind, I think really is helpful. If you think about it, you have to know where you're going before you get started going in that direction. Agreed. And I like how you talked about there is kind of that need to also look at the whole picture. If you are looking at an entire program, and let's say I have optimistically, I have a student that's going to stick with me all four years of say high school. 
where are we starting them off looking at where they are and then ultimately where do they want to go and what benchmarks do I need to hit in between there is definitely very very important so you kind of have to look at it from the micro level of this is unit five lesson one and we're going to cover topics of life and school in China but we have to focus on that as well as the big picture to make sure that we're getting everything the students need to continue up that ladder of proficiency. Thank you for those thoughts. Fantastic. 